Welcome to ScrapDragon TV. In this episode, we'll learn about the differences between ScrapDragon Extreme and ScrapDragon Classic in the Buy module. Migrating from Classic to SDX requires only a minimum amount of training because SDX was built on the same concepts and designs of ScrapDragon that you already know and love. While there are some differences in the way that the screens appear and some processes have been moved around on the menus, you will find that you can quickly adapt to the new arrangement. One noticeable difference is that SDX utilizes a wider screen and the screen size automatically adjusts to the window size, unlike Classic which was designed to use a fixed screen size. This makes SDX more suitable to use on the widescreen monitors, tablets, and handheld devices. Because the main window can resize, some of the screen controls have to operate a little differently. All of the fixed grids have been replaced with tiles or variable length lists. More of the screens are designed to be used with a touchscreen monitor or touch-enabled devices and a keyboard icon is available to display or hide the on-screen alphanumeric keyboard. Screens that allow searching of data now use a search panel on the left of the screen and tiles for the retrieved data. You will see this when searching for customers, commodities, tickets, receipts, contracts, and so forth. These search panels allow for both entry of a search key and the application of data filters, although the exact set of filters will vary depending on the file being searched. For simplicity, Classic was designed to have only one screen open at a time. While this made the program easy for scale operators, it could be very annoying for other users. Extreme provides the convenience of having more than one window open at a time using what is known as a tabbed interface, which maintains some of the simplicity of Classic by never overlapping one window with another. This tabbed interface makes moving among several processes easy. For example, a user can be previewing a report on one tab, looking at a ticket viewer on another tab, and checking the price list on another. Pay attention to the action items along the bottom of many of the screens. The action items that are available change depending on which screen you are on in SDX. When using Extreme, always be aware of these buttons. Instead of buttons, the main screen uses tiles like the latest versions of Windows. In addition to the tiles that are built into Extreme, there are user-defined shortcut tiles that can be configured to launch other programs outside of Extreme. Users will only see the tiles that they have clearance to access. A document showing where every process in Classic can be found in Extreme is available on our website. Now we'll look at the Buy module. The buying screens are similar to what you've seen in Classic, but if the shipping module is enabled at the workstation, there will be shortcuts to the shipping and transfer menu options. A major enhancement is the integration of live video from the JPEGer cameras. All of the video cameras that are set up in JPEGer are available for viewing from the main scrap buying screen. The scale and cashier cameras can also be configured to show a preview image before they are captured into JPEGer. There is a separate video on the integration of live video into ScrapDragon Extreme. As in Classic, the View Held, View Closed, and View Paid buttons are used to retrieve tickets in process. The screens are similar in that they display the tickets in the selected status. But now the search capabilities are expanded. In Classic, you could only search by ticket number. Extreme will try to match the search key to the ticket number and to company name, first name, last name, and hold description, and will also find partial matches. To create a customer ticket, you must first search for the customer. To find the customer in Classic, you needed to select one field to search, either customer number, last name, company, or barcode. Then you'd enter characters to search for from the beginning of the search field until the customer was found. In Extreme, it is no longer necessary to select a field to search on. Extreme will search on six fields simultaneously unless you choose to search on just one field. Also, unlike Classic, Extreme will find the search characters no matter where it appears in the field. You can also filter the search for customers of other yards. Known matches from the file will appear as suggestions that you can choose. The fixed lookup grid from Classic is gone in favor of individual tiles for each customer. Notice the customer's picture on each tile. This picture is extracted from the customer's driver's license when the customer is added. This eliminates the need to display the driver's license to verify the customer's identity. 
If you don't find the customer on file, touch the Add button to add a new customer. As in Classic, the easiest way to do this is by scanning the customer's driver's license and the customer's picture will be automatically extracted from the license. As in Classic, specific messages may display for this customer. Depending on your setup, other messages may alert you to missing customer data, an underage seller, and so on. Extreme also has the option to designate a customer as Do Not Buy. You will not be able to make a ticket for a Do Not Buy customer. If you are required to capture delivery vehicle information, Extreme will be set up to display the customer's delivery vehicles on file. Choose the vehicle. If the delivery vehicle is not in the list of delivery vehicles for this customer, you can touch the plus sign and add it here. You can also edit or delete vehicles in the list. In Classic, you would have had to cancel and then add edit or delete vehicles in Ticket Info. The Create Ticket screen is laid out very much like the Classic Buying screen, but there are some significant differences. At the top of the screen, you will see the customer's name and address. Touching the pencil next to the name allows you to edit the customer without having to go through Ticket Info. The address of the customer is displayed because Scrapdragon Extreme allows you to have multiple addresses on file for each customer. To select an alternate address, touch the action item Customer Address. If your system is configured for government reporting, you may see a green or red dot next to the customer's name. If the dot is green, the customer information is complete and you are in compliance. If the dot is red, just touch it to find out what information is missing. The button menus still have buttons for choosing a commodity or for navigating to another page. But notice that the navigation buttons all have three dots to indicate that they will launch another menu page. In Classic, all the button menus had seven rows and three columns, but in Extreme you may see menus that have any number of rows and columns, and the buttons will be sized to fit. As in Classic, the Home button will return you to the main menu. The Ticket Preview area is in the same location on the screen, but the area is now interactive. In Classic, the Weight, Quantity, Deductions, and Price buttons only change the last item that was added to the ticket. The Edit Details button was required to change these values for other line items. In Extreme, the Weight, Quantity, Deductions, and Price buttons will change whichever line item is selected on the interactive receipt. The selected item will have a distinct background color and bold border. An item that is selected in the interactive ticket preview may also be removed using the Remove Line item. A removed item remains visible in the ticket preview area, but the line turns red. You can reinstate a removed item by selecting it and then touching the Undo Remove button. You will also not use Edit Details to enter VINs or add purchases to inventory as completed packs as these are now done using the action items at the bottom of the screen for the selected line item. Because Extreme permits multiple VINs to be entered on one line item, it is no longer necessary to create a separate line item for each vehicle. Also, since Extreme allows the entry of both weight and quantity on a single line item, you can record both weight and the number of vehicles on a single line. As in Classic, Edit Details is still needed to change an item to a different commodity, to override an item description, or to enter a serial number for an item. New in Extreme is the ability to add notes about an item. Also, if you are allocating line item weights as a percentage of the truckload weight, you would still need to do this in Edit Details. If your system is configured for government reporting, you may see a green or red dot next to each item in the preview area. If the dot is green, then the item information is complete and you are in compliance. If the dot is red, just click on it to find out what information is missing. When taking weights, Preview Camera shows a live view of the scale before the picture is taken. Instead of just a warning message that the tear weight is missing, SDX can be set up to require tear weights on specific scales and not on others. Line item deductions are still available by weight or dollar amount as in Classic. But now you're not limited to just one weight deduction and one dollar deduction. 
You may add as many deductions on each line as you need. There is also a new deduction by percent that will deduct a certain percentage of the value of the line item. Note the deductions by percent cannot be used in combination with a weight or dollar deduction. The Price Override button works exactly the same as in Classic. On the screen you can select an override price from the pop-up prices, the available quotes, or from a previous purchase. If permitted, you can enter a manual price using the keyboard. As in Classic, you can also use the Price As button to do an immediate upgrade. Ticket Info has similar functionality to what you've used in Classic, except it is no longer required to change the customer, enter a delivery vehicle, or to view the pictures, all of which can now be triggered using the action items at the bottom of the screen. You will still need the Ticket Info screen to take a manual picture, save document scans, view customer scans, or change the pay to customer or carrier. Ticket Info screens are also where you enter any additional ticket level information, such as source, transport type, freight amount, or any of the eight custom defined fields. You can also suppress ticket prices and indicate if the customer is a legal owner of the material. Notice the new truck icon below the ticket preview area? Touch this icon to deduct a freight charge from the ticket. You can choose from the gross or net weight and choose which freight commodity to use. If active quotes exist and any of the quoted items are on the ticket, you can use the Apply Quotes action item to apply the quoted prices without using the Price Override button. The ticket will be priced in the default currency for the customer. If this ticket is to be priced in a different currency, it can be selected here. The Ticket Processing buttons Hold Ticket, Close Ticket, Pay Ticket and Void Ticket function exactly as they did in Classic. The Hold Description screen is exactly the same as in Classic with 21 predefined abbreviations and freeform entry from the on-screen keyboard or the physical keyboard accepted. The Pay Ticket process is similar to that of Classic and is covered in a separate video. A new feature in SDX is the ability to view an image of a commodity in the Buy module. The Scale Operator can verify the commodity before adding it to the ticket. This will eliminate the operator adding the wrong commodity to a ticket. In Extreme, Customer Advances work the same way as they do in Classic. But in Classic, you had to manually create a negative ticket to represent the account's receivable amount after making a customer advance. Scrapdragon Extreme will automatically create the negative ticket whenever a customer advance is created. Like in Classic, Scrapdragon Extreme can automatically generate a freight payable ticket. Choose the carrier in the ticket info and select a freight rate when the ticket is closed or enter the rate in Ticket Info. When the ticket is closed, you are prompted to create the freight payable ticket for the carrier. This concludes this episode of Scrapdragon TV. You learned about the differences between Classic and Extreme when using the Buy module.